My name is Bruis, Chrome Developer Relations Engineer here at Google, and this is Unleash the Power of Scroll-Driven Animations. A common UI pattern seen on quite a few websites are elements that get animated on scroll. As you scroll up and down, an animation updates in direct response. Check this recording of the Google Visitor Experience website. As you scroll the page down, the text shrinks and fades out while the images in the corners grow. The playing video also grows bigger as it comes into view. To do this, you typically have to set up a scroll listener with some JavaScript or resort to an intersection observer to track elements across the scroll port. In this video series, I'll show that you no longer need these libraries as scroll-driven animations are now part of the web platform. The features I'm about to cover are currently only available in Chrome and hopefully soon in other browsers too. So, what is a scroll-driven animation? Well, the name kind of says it. It's an animation that is driven by scroll. Check out these images that reveal themselves as they cross the scroll port. As you scroll up or down the scroller, the revealing animation's playhead also scrubs forwards or backwards. And as soon as you pause scrolling, the animation also pauses at its current position. There's a direct link between the scrolling action and the progress of the animation. This is in contrast to scroll triggered animations. These are animations that are also linked to a scroll interaction, yet these run on their own time-based timeline. Initially, these animations are inactive. Once you reach a certain scroll offset, they start playing with you not being able to stop it. Once started, scrolling does not have an influence on the progress as time is sticking the animation forwards. So, to be clear, this series is about scroll-driven animations, not scroll-triggered ones. The latter is something that we at Google would like to ship in a future version of Chrome, but it still needs a bit of work before we can do that. Now, I'm very aware that there's already a bunch of JavaScript libraries out there that allow you to create scroll-driven animations. So why should you bother learning this new web platform feature? Honestly, you don't need to learn a lot of new things here. The way scroll-driven animations were designed is that you can take an existing CSS animation or a WAPI animation and link that to scroll. Since you already know how to create animations in general, the only new thing to learn here is how to attach it to a scroller. And if you don't know how to create a CSS animation, no worries. We've got a very good article on that over at web.dev. But that's not the main reason why you should drop these third-party libraries or scripts. The main reason to use native scroll-driven animations is performance. A library that animates elements on scroll typically responds to scroll events on the main thread. This makes creating performance scroll-driven animations that are in sync with scrolling impossible, or at least very difficult. If the main thread is getting blocked in any way, as seen in this recording, the animations are subject to jank. Ouch. Because scroll-driven animations leverage the existing CSS animations and WAPI animations, you gain all of their benefits. And that includes being able to have hardware accelerated animations as shown in this demo, which are not subject to jank. Yes, you heard it right. You can now have silky smooth animations driven by scroll, running off the main thread. And all that with just a few lines of extra code. Very exciting stuff. Check out the link shown on screen for a case study on the performance benefit that scroll-driven animations give you. Scroll-driven animations are supported in Chrome from version 115. To cater for older Chrome versions or browsers that don't support scroll-driven animations, you have two options. One. If you consider these animations to be supportive to the whole experience, you can resort to feature detection. Only when the browser supports scroll-driven animations, then apply the code. This is known as progressive enhancement. Or two, load up a polyfill. Our engineers and people from the community have dedicated some of their time to creating and refining this. To use the polyfill, link up the JavaScript file and you're done. There is no setup step, the polyfill automatically kicks into action. Do note, however, that the polyfill runs JavaScript on the main thread, so you won't get any of the performance benefits the native implementation brings, on the contrary. And though, while you're at it, you might also want to take the prefers reduced motion preference into account. That way, users who have indicated that they are not fine with motion won't get to see the animations. So, that's it for this first video in this series. 
In the other videos, I'll first start off with a few videos covering the core concept of scroll-driven animations, followed by some more videos in which I dissect some practical demos. See you in the next episode!